Now, all the, all the things you've done, you've um, been a, uh, ridden as an amateur rider. Um, do you ever consider becoming a professional at any point in your not really yeah. career? I, was, I mean, I suppose I was closest to it when I was riding for the Adidas Cycon team for a year. Um, but I wasn't really, a, I, was, I was still working. Uh, and it wasn't at the time... I mean, when I when I was racing on the road, this, there was a there was a pro and amateur status. Now it's an open sport, so the whole sort of uh, the whole status has changed completely, really. Um, but I think, in a general sense, being a professional wouldn't have suited me. You know, I I like cycling too much. I enjoy yeah. and, I, and I enjoy life to the to to the point that I need to do lots of it to survive, rather than just narrow it down. Uh, once I narrow it down to training and racing like I do for short periods uh, I'd get I'd very quickly get frustrated really so I need I need a broad spectrum of things to keep me sort of uh, focused and uh, need to be able to just do different stuff mm. and ride the motorbike and see my friends and yeah just do just do things and, uh, and you can't do that as a professional racing cyclist you know those people those guys those guys and girls earn their living 10 times over you know their lifestyle is so narrow and so demanding um, I, I just don't think I've got what it takes to live like that really to enjoy life too much which is great yeah I'm that, I mean those <laughs> a lot of the guys and girls who are pros do love it you know they love their, yeah. their, they do love the lifestyle uh, you know you often hear the pros saying you know it, it really just I, I turned professional because I just didn't want a normal job you know I never do and they probably never will want a normal job uh, and they love the lifestyle and the travelling and everything that's evolved with cycling and uh, and that's brilliant you know and, um, but but it wouldn't suit me I'm just no. not that kind of person it's horses for courses isn't it I mean, yeah it's got, it's, got to, it's got to suit some of us um, over the years that you've sort of been involved in cycling not just as a cyclist yourself and also observing the amateur and professional um, sort of spheres of cycling do you sort of think over that period of time it's changed for the better or, or for the worse I think it's changed for the better I really mm. do I think um, the coaching the you know British cycling has moved cycle the, the pointed end of the cy of cycle sports on a million steps you know um, the coaching facilities now are so much better than they were when I was young mm. I mean, we didn't really have coaching when I was young uh, and that was in a way I fell foul of that a little bit because uh, I just I needed direction when I was a young roadman in the sort of 18, 19, 20 mm. years old. I needed direction badly. And like a lot of people my age, you know, I look back and think of the things I was doing when I was should have been a formative road racer. And we just had a clue. <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing at all. And I've heard lots of guys and girls my age say the same thing about when they were in their formative years, that there just wasn't the information and the, and the coaching back background to fall back on you know that, that there is now but bc they've got coaches going around schools getting kids interested um giving them uh, uh, advice and um, training programs and um, just there's, there's a far better sort of structure than the, the than there ever was really now and so for the point and end of the sport i'd say everything about it is better um, for the rest of the sport, maybe the, you know, traffic on the roads and um, and the whole club scene, which I think might be degrading slightly as the years go on. Maybe things aren't quite so rosy. One thing that worries me, uh, and I'll probably risk of saying a bit old-fashioned in a way, but but I think um, because there's been lots of people come into cycling over the last ten years, it's just enjoyed a tremendous resurgence, which. I, for one, didn't really see coming. Um, and that's brilliant, you know, that is great. But it's brought a lot of uh, more mature people into the sport. Um, you know, not, not youngsters, really, because the young people, parents are scared to let young people ride on the road, and rightly so. Um, so the people that come into the sport tend to be older now. But they haven't got that club background and, and, and the sort of knowledge and experience that that brings um, with them. So... So, you know, out on the road, on a normal club run, you'll see people, groups of people riding along with absolutely no group riding skills whatsoever and, and, um, and no real sort of, none of that club 
background that, that we, we, we were lucky enough to have. And um, although people might think, well, that's a bit old-fashioned, we don't need all that now, there's still, you know, maybe some of it you don't need, but but some of it was good, sound cycling, you know, knowledge that that, that has gone for generations and, and, and we're losing that a bit, I think. And um, motorists, motorists need to see cyclists behaving rationally and professionally and uh, I, I believe that motorists will give the cyclists a lot more respect if they see them cycling in a way that looks competent and so many times now you see groups of cyclists on the road that, that patently are competent that um, I still think that the traditional club scene has got a lot to offer people who are coming into the sport new and uh, without experience and, uh, and, and uh, you know, hopefully that we won't see the club scene degenerate to the point where it can't offer that experience back to people. Yeah, it would be an awful shame, given that, as you say, the, the, all the good efforts that BC have made to improve things and make people more interested and all that sort of thing, if, if then the, uh, yeah, the, the club scene were to sort of decline and not be there to, to support all these what is it, the middle-aged men in, in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is great. I mean, yeah. these people, I mean, the sport needs these people to come in and, and, the, and they've done... Bike shops are thriving because these older people have got money to spend on kit and bikes and clothes and and and, and we've got their cycling which is brilliant you know there's nothing wrong with that it's it's all good but we also need them to fast forward into sort of traditional cycling culture a bit really and um, and and the, the only way we can do that I think is through through experienced riders offering them their advice and uh, and, and giving them a fast route into 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 sort of uh, into cycling culture, and, yeah. uh, so you know hopefully we can do that. Uh, I, I you know, personally we do a little bit by uh, we're in a, a triathlon club, Joe and I, and um, I, my job within that club is to is set people up on their bikes. So I, I use what is just years of experience really to 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 get people's riding positions right on their bikes because often people start cycling. They might have all the you know all the kit and ice bike and everything, but their riding positions are woefully wrong, you know, and and they can cycle for years like that, and that affects the way they, you know, that limits their performance most importantly, but also often limits the riding positions can, can be enough to limit the way how competently they can ride their bike really. So, mm -hmm. so that's my little bit. I I do my best to get people on the right track with their with their riding positions and their bikes. And, um, yeah. Put some, put something back, put something back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something that I've always been interested in. You know, that kind of that technical element is something that, ever since I was a kid, I, I've had a fascination with. So, uh, I enjoy, you know, 